Right, time to make some doors and drawers. First thing I need to do is make a drawer. And that is 447. And that's about 447 as well. We're going to use undermount drawer runners. There's a little bit of giving them, like I was saying. Don't use them ball bearing ones anymore. Right, these are the runners, the drawer runners that I'm going to be using. Made by Hetish. I really like these. They're undermount runners, soft close undermount runners. Your drawer sits on there and the sides just sit inside that groove. There's a plate that goes on the back. That's got its own adjustment for up and down. That clips in there. And this one, upside down, goes on there. Clips into there. For the overall length, these are 450 runners. The overall length is 450. Six or seven. That's adjustable. That's sprung loaded. There's adjustment for up and down, left and right. You can adjust them in every way you want. Press that. That clip comes in. This sits on there. Look. You see those little notches. So as you're putting it in the drawer. It'll clip into place. This adjustment moves the drawer left and right. That one pushes a wedge in there. That pushes behind there so it'll lift the drawer. This one moves the drawer front in and out. You've got one both sides of course so you can twist the door. And like I said, this one clips on the back. And with that little wheel it moves all those fins up and down. Like that. Like these runners just sit in like that. Sit to the bottom. Easy to fit. The drawer just sits in this groove but it only allows for 15mm. 18mm will fit. But it's a bit tight for me. So I'm going to trim that down. I'll show you that when I make the draw. I'll just get another clamp on there. That one's in. Right, I've got my draw front. I'll be like that. But then I've got my drawer as well. I'm making a drawer and then putting a drawer front on it. Because you've got to allow a little bit of clearance. So there'll be a small gap all the way around the drawer. So the drawer front will plant on later. But from there, I can measure from here to there. Work out the size of my drawer. Like I say, I'm going to cut down the 18mm to 15mm. So. 15mm on there, 15mm on there, and 15mm on that end makes that 435. Then I need to come to the bottom of this this thing, this clip. I'm going to give it 10mm at the top. That comes to about 225, so I'm going to cut my boards at 215 for the length. This little clip goes on the back. I'll be going like that. And from there to the front, I've got 435. And you can see they missed the bottom. So you can sit them right down to the bottom. And once you've worked out your jaw, there's a front going on like that. Work out what that gap is. 
and imagine if I've got a few drawers cut a scrap piece sit, sit one drawer on like that use that scrap piece to the other side and cut it down to your next drawer sit your next runner on and so on right, I've just ripped down a couple of pieces for the drawers I need to work out and I need to work out the length so this is the drawer this is the side that's the front so it'll be like that so that will be sitting underneath the drawer like that so you can see there I need to add that to the length of the side because I measured from here to there that was 435 so plus 10 mil or whatever it is so that'll be 445 but then the back will be the same except for that's hard up against there I need to minus 10 mil the thickness of that the thickness of this piece so whatever I measure that is the size of the side which is easy to work out so I've got 435 length but I've also got 435 across the front when I cut drawers I like to cut them both at the same time similar to when I make the unit if I cut them at exactly the same time, if I make it, I want 435, so if I make it 434 or 36, 37, at least they'll both be the same size. So when I come to put my jaw together, it should be square. So, just trim one end. These are the offcuts from when I was making the unit. Plenty of room. I'm going to turn the speed down on this machine because it helps with the dust collection. Right, saw me set up the machine the other day for the corner joints, so I've just whizzed through them. What I need to do is put a groove around here for the bottom panel. this cutter. It's set at about 9mm. Every board I buy seems to be a very slightly different size than this one. Right, I'm going to set the height for this clip that goes on the front to the bottom edge. Before 
I did the actual pieces, I cut a sample piece. And what I want to do is set this so that it's only cutting as deep as that into here. I don't want to cut into this otherwise you see it. Otherwise you see it on the edge. Right, I've cut a bottom panel, I've just sanded these edges a little bit just so that they fit in the groove nicer. And when I ran the grooves I lost this little corner here. Doesn't matter because this will be getting cut off anyway so you won't see that when it's up like that. But I've tried in the past cutting this, then that, or that, then this and I don't know, I think it's just susceptible. Maybe a backer board is to go through. But if you look at the way that is, that went into the cutter first, so don't know, doesn't bother me. Now I'm going to glue this up, plenty of glue. I start with the side, put the bottom in, and then these slide in, and then finally your top will slide in like that. If you do it the other way, you've got to try and spread these legs and put them in. So side first. I'm going to glue it all around. Lots of glue. Right, I've got a few clamps on. I'm going to put some more the other way. But that pressing in there isn't going to alter what I'm going to do. I need to check it for square. So 631, 630. So I'm just going to give that corner a whack. Holding onto this corner. Thirty six thirty. I'll get some more clamps in the other way. Right, while that dries. Doors next. I've got very square there. There's no movement in that at all. But I've got maybe a millimetre out of square there. Not much. This is pretty straight. This old door is pretty straight. And I don't. I don't want. I showed on the kitchen. I think it was that in order to get two dominoes in the top of the frame of the doors. See here. To get two dominoes in there, these timbers need to be about 80 mil. I don't want them that far. I want them about 70 mil, which is what I drew on here. This has been approved, so that's what I'm going to make them. So anyway, they're pretty straight. I'll get a straight edge on the top of there and just make sure that these are as square as I can get. I am wondering though, that when it goes to the job, whether it's going to sit to the shape of the floor. I am going to put another frame underneath but whether it will sit to the shape of the floor I don't know. So I just did a little test cut on a scrap piece using just the first stop 
first stop against the edge and then move it so that the stops sitting inside this edge here and that gives you a mortise about that big and then I reckon 10 mil for the groove I should be able to comfortably get a 70 mil with a half decent sized tenon these are only little doors so I'll make some tenons for there Alright, so I've made a couple of sample pieces and you can see you get a little ridge down the inside sometimes they're not exactly in line however careful I cut it these pencil marks are just to show me which is the face and I made dominoes in the past, these are too tight see there they just fit in nicely but there's no room for the glue to come out so I had some time on my hands one day and I made these and what I discovered from these and from looking at a regular domino is you have to leave this little lip on the edge when that goes in wrong size to go in there but when this goes in that piece it, it, it crushes a little bit but this is what lines lines that edge up there I've made normal dominoes before and if they you know they're a bit tight to get in so you leave them slightly loose and they don't fit so I've cut some wood that I'll plane to fit in there and then I'm going to make like a little lip on the edge and I'll make it tight to fit that and the fancy gadget tells me that needs to be about 36 So I'll plane this wood down to 36, maybe a fraction more. And these dominoes, that impression on there that helps the glue stick, it looks like it's compressed in. Biscuits are compressed so that when you put them in and the glue gets on them, they expand. These might do something similar. I can't do that. And I know that wood on wood sticks fairly well for what I'm doing. I'll just plane these smooth those grooves that I made that allowed for the glue I made with this cutter I'm not going to do that with these I right, to plane these down my machine don't go this low not comfortably anyway so I have to raise the bed up a little bit I have a piece of white chip board with a little stop on the end to stop it pulling through and I keep it waxed don't put much on but just enough what I use. Same stuff that I use on the beds of all my machines. Makes, makes the wood slide through a lot easier. Right, the size was 36 I was looking for and he's finished at 36.5 five, thirty six six, 36, six, about 36.6 six, roughly I'm just going to use a straight cutter I've got many cutters I could put rounds on it but all we're doing basically is just removing that little corner there out of there and leaving a little nib on the edge here and that's just to allow the glue to come out there's nothing that says that they have to be round so I'm going to set that so it just takes that cone off
Oh, I've got a piece to go in here. These are maybe a bit long. Chip the edge there. These are maybe a bit long. But slightly out. I don't think that's my bit, my machine, my dump. Uh, I don't think that's my homemade domino. That one's flush. I think it's that. Must have got it slightly out. Yeah, that'll work. fraction long this that's better yeah very good I think I cut that one slightly wrong I don't know very very Ooh. You can hardly tell. Good. Cut all these to length now. Alright, I've got the frames laid out. See, I've got a little bit of break out on the back here. It's nearly nothing. But I didn't have these closed up, they were a bit messed up. I've closed them up now to cut these, cut all these dominoes, but. I always put these to the outside so that you get a nice clean cut on the inside. Pick the best faces. So as always, go around, mark the inside face. I'll start cutting them. Just gotta move these bits of wood around to suit those bits of wood. Alright, 20mm timber, so it's set at 10. I'm going to go 50mm full depth. It's an 8mm cutter. Like I say, I've just got the first pin showing. Right, this cutter I've got only just does 9mm, it's a bit tight. So what I've done is I've set it up so that I can run it through once, 
then run it through the other side that will put the groove down the middle but it also opens it up just a fraction it's very slightly loose on this on this test piece it's a nice fit really but when it comes to do long rails I know that you, you need a little bit of slack otherwise you can't get them in I was going to put a backer board on this but I know that you need a wood that's as hard as the beach that I'm putting through because this edge quite quickly gets, gets worn over so I've got an old one here this little edge here it gets worn over quite quickly that's the side you see how rounded it is there doesn't make that much difference to be honest and looking at this sample it's it's quite good actually start thinking about cutting the panels I made these grooves just a fraction over 10 mil so from this I can work out what size they are when I cut these timbers I cut them in pairs two at a time so I labeled the ends it says a there a there so I know these two are exactly the same one of the doors is two mil bigger than the other so that's 78 that's 80 so I labeled those so they're all the same the other one's obviously B and B and then that one's on its own so didn't need to label that one so much I'll cut the panels I'll cut them a fraction short of 10mm right I'll glue them up later when I've got my clamps I've got loads of clamps but they're all too big right, I'm going to glue it together with PU glue Give the board a wipe over with 120, it's easier to do before you put it together. I get some clamps on it. That works. Oh, that works out very well. They're very flush. My machine cuts them square, the domino cuts in square, so they normally end up square. But just to check, made a little point on that stick. A little pencil mark there. Spot on. Make sure it's flat, make sure it's sat down on the clamps. Use winding sticks if you have to, just make sure it's not twisted. Leave it to dry. 
is really nice wood to work with this beach you can really see why furniture's liked it for many years even the dodgy grain even when the grain's going up and down a little bit it still machines up really nice feels nice smooth <laughs> 